Hello everyone, this is Taryn with Wonderfully Made Handcrafting and today I am redoing a video that I had done previously in January. Um, unfortunately, one of my videos somehow got deleted off of YouTube and it was one that, you know, a lot of people were asking for, um, which is a dyeing papers with distress free inkers and getting cool um, marks on them with a vinyl tablecloth. So I've decided I've I took a little time um, to realize that I had to redo this video um, and I am redoing it today, but I wanted to kind of show you what we are going for. Um, I have a couple different Distress Reinkers um, in the browns that I love. I have some vinyl tablecloth. I bought this one um, on eBay, I believe, and it is a Kane Casual Lifestyle Collection um, vinyl tablecloth. And I have the colors today in frayed burlap, ground espresso, and vintage photo. So I have a ton of papers, probably don't need to make any more, um, but I just wanted to redo this video and I'm giving some papers away to friends. So this is the kind of look that you get. I did a lot of these with vintage um, papers, like this is 1894, Ledger, 1900. Um, so I love using my A House of Books subscription stuff, um, but just also some Ledger books that I've had in my stash. So you can see um, the designs. Now you don't have to use the vinyl tablecloth. It still gives you a really cool look, um, but this is just another way to make it unique. So this is just regular copy paper. So I'll probably be doing some of those as well, regular copy paper. And it's fun to see how the different pages and papers react to the different um, reinkers. So a lot of the purple tones are from Ground Espresso. I love this. This is some receipts from 1889. Some more ledger paper. One side I did the design and the other side does not have it. So this is um, just some blue. I think it started off like a really light blue some cardstock that I had. So anyways, I should uh, just jump right in, I guess, into this video and the process. Like I said, I have some vinyl um, tablecloth already cut out. I did that in my first video where I showed you how to cut it out, but basically it's super simple. Just use my Tim Holtz scissors and cut out different designs that I thought I might want. Some are corner pieces. Some are, um, you know, just more aligned looks like this one, especially. Um, so you could put your copy paper like this. But um, that is what we are working with today. And I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so first things first, just to let you know, this project is super messy. You could cover your whole desk up if you want, but I don't do that often. And so instead, I'm just letting you know that Magic Eraser and that Dawn Dish Power Wash or whatever do a really good job on cleaning the reinker up off your white desk. Because if you don't get it off, Eventually it will stain, but I found that, you know, this took me about half an hour and I had re inker all over my desk and it did come up. Um, so just let you know. So anyways, um, I have vintage photo re inker and also frayed burlap re inker in this water. I fill up the pan and just enough with water that I can easily dip my pieces of paper in. And I want to make sure that that re inker is moved around throughout the water. I did have some letters here from my House of Books subscription and the paper was super fragile so they kind of broke apart but no big deal because I use little pieces of paper all the time throughout my Bible journaling and junk journaling so it doesn't bother me if they rip apart a little bit. So for every one of these pieces of paper I'm just making sure to dip them in um, really well, get them nice and drenched in that liquid. Um, also for this, I am not doing um, the vinyl tablecloth on the little pieces just because the vinyl tablecloth that I've used basically takes over the whole entire page um, because I've cut big pieces. But if you wanted to, you could also cut literal, littler pieces of vinyl tablecloth. Um, 
but I just love the look that this reinker gives to the different kinds of papers. So I like some of them to be plain as well. But here's my first one that I'm going to use that vinyl tablecloth on. This is a paper of some kind of railroad information um, that I got in my previous subscription from A House of Books. So I'm using that with some of that vinyl tablecloth and I am adding a little bit more ink with my hands into the cracks of that. So hopefully it'll kind of seep into that paper and soak in there while I wait. Um, I do leave these sitting for a couple hours so that I can soak up all the goodness and get that color really in there. Um, so make sure you have like a butcher pan like I have right here, or you could even use um, like a cookie baking sheet that might work. Um, but these butcher pans are so useful for so many things in the craft arena. So they are a good thing to pick up. So this is just regular old copy paper right here and it gives the best impression honestly for these vinyl tablecloths and it makes them look really cool. Um, so, you know, I know it's super cheap paper and you think, oh, it's not gonna be that cool, but it really is. So try that out as well. I have some ledger paper here. I have three books of ledgers um, that I love using um, all the papers. See, I'm trying to wipe up some re-inker right there. Um, but anyways, sometimes I use the papers that have the writing on them, and sometimes I just use the plain ones today. And I'm just using the regular old plain ones, but that's good too because it's a different way where you can use those empty sheets in your ledger books. Um, and also, if you use papers that have ink on them already, like pen ink, sometimes they can, when they re-wet, can make a really cool look on your page as well. So this is all basically, you know, trial and error and finding out what you like. And honestly, a lot of times these come out differently just piece by piece. Some of them will have more tones of purple, blue, or yellow. And I just love the differentiation of all these papers. So right here, I'm adding in a little bit of ground espresso re-inker. I wanna make a darker color now, and it will seep into some of the layers on the bottom, um, but most of them will keep the color. Um, but I'm okay if it seeps in because whatever happens, happens. And I just love all the different ways that you can create with these papers. So here is just some regular copy paper and you may be thinking, wow, that's kind of boring um, because that's what I thought too the first time I did it. Like, why would I use copy paper? Um, but the copy paper comes out beautifully with this vinyl lace. It just has the most gorgeous look. So, you know, just try all the papers that you have because you never know what you may find. So as I finish this up and show you my results, I did want to make mention again that I do leave these papers in the butcher pan for at least a number of hours, if not overnight. I have had no issue with the paper um, breaking down or anything in my own experience. But what I do to dry them is I take them one by one and heat set them and dry them completely with my heat tool um, or as completely as possible. And then I will lay them all down on a plastic tablecloth on the ground underneath the fan and let them dry fully so that they're nice and crinkly. And that is how I finished this project up and these are my results. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me over on Instagram at Wonderfully Made Handcrafting. I'll try to leave the link to the products I used down below in the description and I hope you have a wonderful day guys. Bye.